Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my WordPress newspaper theme tutorial. In this tutorial, I am showing you how to turn this basic, basic, basic WordPress theme into this really, really, really nice WordPress theme. It has a featured content tool. It's going to have a light box. It has everything you could pretty much want. If you haven't seen the tutorial in which I created this guy right here, which is simplistic, you should definitely check it out. Otherwise, you will be confused. I promise you that. Well, when I left you off last time, this is what we had. We had this menu bar system all set up. However, this was a little bit garbled up here. I'm going to fix that in one second. All I need to do is the code that we had previously. I got it here on the screen and I'm going to paste in the Google library that's going to link to jQuery. That's all I did there. Just pasted that in and you can see the link here and this is exactly what you would do is just copy and paste. And if you want to link to the actual code, I provide that in the underbar underneath this video. If we file save that and reload, you can see that everything is all nice and pretty. Everything's fixed up here with the featured content tool. So now I'm going to continue on. If you look at the difference between this right here and the previous guy that I had here on the screen right here, you can see that the top bar is quite a mess. So we're going to come in here and we're going to fix that. And how we're going to do that is by using Google Web Fonts. Many people don't know this, but there's all kinds of great fonts you can use for free from Google. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to get one of them. It's very, very easy. I'm looking for lobster which is one that I just thought kind of worked for this. And there it is. And if you want to add this, be able to use this font in your website, you just click on the font you want then click on use this font. And then what I normally do is come down to advanced techniques and get this little import right here and copy it. Then I'm going to open up my style.css file. And before anything else, I'm going to paste that in there. Great. Now I can use that font, which is really cool. I'm also going to change a lot of other things in this tutorial. As you can see, this background just doesn't work. This is much better. And I provide a link to a repeating background tutorial if you don't know how to do these repeating backgrounds so that you can use real small images that just continually go all over the background of your page and keep everything all nice and neat. I'm just going to jump right in here. Remember, this is style.css. And I'm going to change some things here. I'm going to put in a background image. Like I said, it's a repeating background. So how do I do that? I just go background dot image colon URL. And this is going to link out to my image. And it's called lines dash eight for no particular reason. And then you have to go background repeat if you want it to repeat up and down the screen and just type in repeat again. And I'm also going to come down into body. I'm getting rid of these filters, which I used previously. And I'm just going to jump up here and grab this guy that I just typed in, copy and paste that in there. And if I file save that, jump over here, you can see now I have a nice repeating background. It looks really sharp. So I'm going to continue cleaning up everything here in the CSS code. And then I'm going to jump back into the HTML and play around a lot. So I have to fix up the header. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come in here to background color. I'm going to go 676767, which just seems to work. And then after that, I'm going to paste in that repeating image again. File save. Doink. Just that easy. That's all it takes. And we're going to come down to blog title because I want to style this, remember, using a lobster. I just need to change the positioning a little bit here. So I want it to be 26 pixels from the left. 15 pixels down still works great for me. And white as a color works great for me. For font, I'm going to leave all of this the same, except for this guy. And I'm going to type in lobster, which is the font that I got from Google right at the beginning of this tutorial, Tahoma. And then I'm going to type in sans serif. And then for text shadow, I'm going to type in 676767. And I'm going to make the blur on this text shadow four pixels. And this is going to be two down and two to the right. That's all that is. File save that. Reload it. And there you go. There's my nice little thing. Now what's a mess here is that the logo is behind there. I decided just to get rid of the logo for now. So I'm going to jump over into index.php, which is our main file. And I'm going to scroll down into this. And you can see right here, this is where the logo shows up. Well, I decided I just want to get rid of the logo. You could put the logo in there, obviously, if you wanted to. And I can leave everything else here the same. And then I'm going to jump back into my style.css file. Again, the code's in the underbar if you want to get it. And it's free, of course. I want to position that slogan so it lines up a little bit better. So I'm going to change this to 124 pixels from the left, 40 pixels from the top of the screen. And then I'm going to change my font here. I'm going to get rid of the bold and I'm going to put 20 pixels in here. And I'm just going to leave this as Georgia Serif. I'm going to change this background text shadow to 676767. And I'm going to make it only go down one pixel to the right, one pixel downwards. And I'm going to change this to two pixels for the shadowing. File save that, reload it. And there you can see, I have that real nice font inside of there, the repeating background. Everything is really nice and sharp and coming together. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this sidebar here and start cleaning up all that code. So what I do, I'm still in index.php. I'm not making any changes to menu here. You can see here, this is where I loaded my featured content last time. There's the first sidebar, and I decided I don't want a second sidebar, so what am I going to do? I'm just going to come in here and delete it. Okay, there goes that second sidebar. Now I'm going to come into my first sidebar. I'm going to start making some changes with this guy. Sidebar title, I decided I don't want anything to have a sidebar title, as you can see here. I'm just going to put these images in here that are going to allow people to go to some different social networks. So for now, I'm just going to delete this out. Sidebar excerpt, not going to be any text inside of here, but instead there's going to be images. How do I load an image? I go image, source is equal to images, and I want to put an RSS feed in there, and it's going to have a class equal to NTT, which stands for New Think Tank featured thumb, I'm trying to use class names that no one else is going to use, and then alt text will just say RSS title, and we'll just say RSS again, and then close that off, and then we're just going to copy these images, copy, boink, boink, now I give everything a name that is very similar, so if I want the Facebook logo in there, I just do that, Twitter logo, and then LinkedIn, which I never use, and then I'm going to change my alt text for all of these. All this stuff's going to load dynamically later, but you always need to create basic HTML and CSS before you can create a theme, or at least that's the way I do it. And because there's no real tutorials online on how to create WordPress themes and like video tutorials, I don't know how other people do it. I'm just showing you how I do it. We file save that. Doink, you can see those little images are popping up there on the right side of the screen, so that's good. We don't need click for more here because there's nothing to click, so just get rid of that. Then we come down to sidebar title, and let's say I want to put my pages inside of here just for now. Sidebar excerpt, again, this is going to change. And I'm going to put an unordered list in here for now. List item, I'm going to say about. Again, later on this is going to be dynamic, but I always do everything in pieces because I don't know how else to do it better. Close off this unordered list. Yeah, I'm going to grab this. All right, communication, sales. I don't know, I'm just typing in stuff. Web development, marketing, investing, and most popular. And again, we're not going to need this click for more. And then let's say I want to put this banner image in here. This would be like an advertisement. How do I do that? Again, I just load an image. I'm going to take out this title here for now. Sidebar excerpt. And let's cheat. Let's come up here. An image. And this is called add sample because that's exactly what it is. Just gives me an idea of what this is going to look like. And I'm just going to put in add for now. And then I'm going to leave this click for more in here just for the heck of it. So let's file save that and reload it. And if we come in here, you can see that it's not quite exactly what we want. So how do we fix that? Well, we fix it with CSS styling. So we go into style.css and we come down to first sidebar. There's second sidebar. Remember that doesn't exist, so we can get rid of that code. We don't need it. All right, so what are we going to do style-wise here? Well, we got to change the width on this to 250, and I made it 250 because there are a plethora of advertisements that are available at 250 pixels, so that's the reason why I chose that. You could, of course, change it. Change that to zero, just the margin on the top. We don't need that. And then I decided I wanted to have a nice little border on the left side. So how do you create a border on a div? You go border, left, one pixel. It's going to be extremely light gray. Solid, DC, DC, DC. So that's a very, very light gray color. And then we're going to come in here to sidebar title. We'll make a couple more changes. I decided this looks better at 14 pixels. I'm going to change this to 17 pixels. Change this to Helvetica. And sans serif's fine. And I decided I wanted this always to be uppercase, the text. I'm going to force that with text transform and uppercase. And then the color needs to change, obviously, F2E. And then I want these guys over here, these dots gone. I want this to look a little hot neater, like it does here with the little borders and all these different things. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So if I want to target an unordered list inside of here, well, I know the ID for this div on the right side of the screen is first sidebar. So I want to target an unordered list and a list item. That's how you do it with CSS code. And I'm going to go font. And I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to copy uppercase. Copy. Okay, so I got that in there. So it's going to force an uppercase and all the fonts are going to look real nice and neat. But I'm only doing this on list items. List style, if I want to get rid of that little dot or bullet, that's exactly how I do it. Just type in list style none. If I want to put in a border on the bottom, just type in border bottom, one pixel. I'm going to say I want it to be dashed. And then I want it to be not that noticeable, so I'm going to use a light gray. And I'm going to make sure the separation looks nice for this guy. So I'm going to go border bottom, or padding bottom. And I'm going to make that three pixels. And I'm going to put some padding on the top too, so it's divided very nicely above and below. 
and I need to make my margin on the left different because remember I got rid of that one sidebar. I'll make it thir negative 30 pixels. And since footer is already here, I'm going to style that up a little bit. Text align center is fine. White is fine. Padding 20 pixels is fine. Where I'm going to define a height for my footer to make sure that it is 220 pixels. And if we file save it, reload it, you can see that the sidebar is looking really nice and sharp. And so is the footer area. One thing that's a little bit messed up there is the image for the advertisement. No problem. Just come in here and define a width equal to. 250 pixels, make sure those quotes are the same, and a height equal to 250 pixels. And we're going to get rid of this class here. File save, reload, and there you can see the advertisements in there. It's jumping down a little bit. Don't worry about that. That's going to fix itself. Now I have to come in here and actually fix all this content that's inside here. I'm not going to fix it all in this one tutorial, but I'm going to take a big bite out of it. So that's all contained in this div called main content. I'm going to create a new div and I'm going to give it a new class and everything else. And this new class is going to be called Featured Posts Div. And I'll put a little comment in here, Featured Post Div, so that I know when that ends. Just a nice placeholder. Keeps me from getting confused. And then I'm going to create an unordered list inside of here. I'm going to give it an ID that's going to be equal to Featured Lists. And then there's going to be a list item. And it's going to contain all of my information for this post that's going to show up inside of here. Oh, another thing I can do is get rid of intro title and intro paragraph because I don't want those there anymore. So they're gone. If you're wondering, this is intro title and this is intro paragraph. If you wanted to keep them there, keep them there. I don't care. Title is going to be H3. Class is equal to featured title. And I'm just going to say post title goes here. Remember, this is all just sort of creating a framework. We're not creating a final, final thing. I'm going to create a paragraph and it's going to have a class equal to featured excerpt. And I'm just going to grab some lorem ipsum down from here. This guy right here. Copy that. Paste it in. And then I'm going to put an H reference, which is just going to hold nothing for right now. Class equal to click for more. Type in the word more for the link there. And that's going to link them to the main article if they click on it. And I just got to close off that paragraph. And then I want to get my image, which I'm lazy. So I'm actually going to scroll up here and just grab this guy right here. Paste that in there. And because featured content is eventually going to become a plugin, I'm going to actually treat it that way so that I'm linking to the plugin itself. So it's an includes this image that I'm grabbing, featured content, images, and I'm just going to use polar bear dash 60 by 60 dot JPEG. And I'm also using the name there because WordPress automatically creates 60 by 60 images whenever you upload any image to WordPress. And alt text is just going to be polar bear. Guess what title's going to be? It's also going to be polar bear. And this is going to be 60 by 60 pixels. And it's going to have a class name. This is very important if we're going to be styling this guy of featured image. And then we're going to close off the list tag. And then we're going to create a whole bunch of these. Well, how many are we creating? Oh, no, I forgot. Uh, one, two, three, four. We're going to create four of them. So just to do this real quick, I'm just going to copy this. Two, three, four. Got that in there. And then I'm going to jump over into, I'm going to file save that first. Then I'm going to jump over into home.css. And we're going to make a couple changes here. This is main content. Remember, this is where I was putting the main content. Don't know how to describe it any better than that. And let's say I wanted to have a height of 1,300 pixels because that sort of seems like that would be good. Remember, I deleted intro title and intro paragraph, so there's no reason for those to exist anymore. Over here, this is called post lists. This is what I'm going to be making changes to this guy right here and I'm also going to be putting in that brand new stuff so since I changed the margin and got rid of that sidebar I'm going to change margin right to 330 pixels and I'm also going to give it a border on the bottom of one pixel and it's going to be solid and it's going to be gray it's important to keep your borders and all this stuff the same otherwise it's going to look dorky remember post title that's this right here that's what I'm changing I want to change the color on that so that it's more fitting with my overall color scheme. So make it, I decided the text shadow was looking too gaudy, so I got rid of it. Margin, left, will be equal to 90 pixels. Text, transform. I decided I wanted all of the titles to be uppercase, so this is gonna force that. Font, will be bold, 14 pixels, 17 pixels. And I'm gonna use Helvetica, or sans serif. And we'll spell it right eventually. There we go. Post image is also going to change a little bit. I'm going to make that 7 pixels from the top and 0 pixels from the left. I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. 
post excerpt is also going to change a little bit. This is going to be 95 pixels. If you don't know how padding works, this is top padding, this is right, this is bottom, this is left padding. Color's fine, line height's fine. I'm going to create a margin on the top, negative 20 pixels for that image. Post content is perfectly fine. However, I created all those new featured posts and all that stuff. Well, to end this part of the tutorial, I'm going to come in here and actually fix that up. And then in the next part of the tutorial, I'll fix up everything that's been left. So I decided I want my font for my featured post to be 13 pixels, 1.4, and Georgia, and Serif. And I want the color for that text to be 666, which is very ominous. Padding, top, colon, 5 pixels. Let's give myself some space so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Padding top is actually going to be 0. And let's copy this. Padding right is going to be 5 pixels. Padding bottom is going to be 15 pixels and all i'm doing is i'm moving these image this stuff around on the screen that's all i'm doing here it's nothing that fancy padding left is going to be 10 pixels and i'm going to give it a background color of white i'm going to give it a width of 250 pixels i'm going to text align it left i'm going to float it right all that means is it's going to bounce it over to the right side of the containing div that's all if you've seen my other tutorials you know that and if you haven't, I'm sure you stopped watching this tutorial. Margin top, again, making it negative 10 pixels. Again, these are just chosen because I know what I want this to look like when it's done. So I just keep moving these paddings and margins around until it looks like what I want. Solid. There you go. There's that light gray again. So now I got to actually start fixing up the actual content. Now it's called featured lists from before. This is in the index.php file. Position it relative. That just means I want to basically position it so that if goes with the flow. Of course, spell it right. I'm going to change my list style to none because I don't want the bullets to show up. That would just look dorky. Let's scroll this up. Now I'm going to come in and style the actual list items. So that's how you do it. This is the enclosing div and this is the list item inside of it. If you don't remember, see this stuff. This is what I'm styling right here. I'm specifically styling that right there. Let's jump back over here. Again, I just want to position it relative. Just go with the flow. That's all that basically means. Margin left. I don't want it to have a margin. Margin right. Nope. That's fine. And then I got to style the title. Featured title. Background. Color is going to be white. Color of the text is going to be a very dark blue. I want padding around my title of five pixels on all sides. So I just put in padding and five pixels. And then I ended up going in here and changing my padding on the left. Zero pixels. Padding. Top. Zero pixels. And then I went and changed my margin on the left to zero pixels. Text transform. Again, I'm forcing everything to be uppercase just because I like the way that looks for this theme font. And I want it to be bold. And I'm using the same fonts as you can tell here for the most part because you don't want your fonts changing constantly. Again, that just looks bad. That's my featured title. And then I only have two more things to style here. Got my featured image. That's the image that's going to be associated with these posts. It's going to position it absolutely. That means I want to tell it exactly where to position itself. But you don't type in absolutely, you just type in absolute. And I want it to be 20 pixels from the top to the enclosing div and 0 pixels. And then I've got my featured excerpt, which is going to be the excerpt for the article. It's going to show up, position it, relative, padding, 0 pixels, 0 pixels, 0 pixels, and 65 pixels. Text color going to be this gray again. Line height is going to be 1.5. And margin top is going to be negative 20 pixels. And if we file save that, jump over an index and file save that. Let's see what we got. Reload. And you can see here, this is coming together real, real nicely. And the right sidebar is looking great. And everything up here is looking great. You can see just that fast, I'm pulling this theme together. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to fix this. Show you how to put all this in here and fix my footer. And then we'll go on to create an actual WordPress newspaper theme. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.